negative away from, if we take a negative away from a negative x, that just leaves us with positive x. And then if we take a negative away from a positive 2, that just gives us negative 2. And then we raise all of that to the 1 -third. Okay, so now this is what's happening. Our input, we're having 2 subtracted for our, from our inputs, which shifts it to the right 2. But then our inputs are also being multiplied by a negative, which means that this is going to get reflected across the y-axis. All right? It's going to be reflected, or sorry, it's going to be reflected uh, horizontally because our inputs are being multiplied by a negative. Okay? So with our cube root function, normally what we do is we go over 1, up 1, right? We would go, we point, so we're this, we go over 1, up 1, and we go over 1, down 1. But since this is getting reflected horizontally, we're actually going to go over 1, down 1, and then we're going to go over 1, up 1. Okay, so there's our three critical points. And again, let me just show you over here to the right what cube root function normally looks like. Is it is concave up and then it's concave down. But since it is uh, reflected, it's going to be concave down first and then concave up. So it's going to look something like this. And there is our function. Okay, So it's been shifted, translated to the right 2 and down 3, and then it has been reflected horizontally. Okay, reflected horizontally. And we can even plug in a point to make sure that we're feeling good about this. Okay, So let's just do that. Because the point 3, negative 4 should be, on, uh, it should work for our function. Okay, So if we plug in 3, we should be getting out negative 4. So let's try it. All right, so we plug in. 3 for x, we cube root that, and then we're going to be subtracting 3, okay? 3 minus 2 is 1, okay? And then we take negative 1, so then we're going to take the cube root of negative 1, which gives us negative 1 minus 3, that gives us negative 4. Okay, so good. So at the input of x equals 3, we get an output of negative 4, which is exactly what we would expect based on our graph. So it's good. Our graph is looking good. Okay, so one more graph to do before we move on to the other problems. So this is 1 third x squared plus 1. So a couple transformations occurring here. We have our plus 1 and we have our 1 third. Okay, plus 1 is again affecting outputs. Whatever our output is when we take x squared, multiply it by 1 third, we're going to add 1 to it, which means we are getting shifted up 1. All right? There's no horizontal shift occurring. So that means our vertex is at 0, 1. Getting better at putting these points on, I think. Okay? Now, normally we go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. This is our typical, our favorite quadratic, right? Over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, and then we have a nice swoop, swoop. Okay? But we're multiplying this by 1 third. Our outputs are being multiplied by 1 third. One third is a number smaller than one, which means that our quadratic better be flattening out, okay? Because we're multiple, our outputs are getting smaller if we multiply by one third. They're not getting bigger, all right? So it's getting compressed. So instead of going over one up one, we're going to go over one, and we're going to go up about a third, okay? Over one, up about a third. Okay, that's, wow, that was not up about a third, huh? Okay, about right there. Okay. And then we can also find that there is a pretty solid point on here where we don't have to go. It's like not a fraction output. If we plug in 3 for x, if we plug in 3 for x, we get 1 third times 3 squared plus 1. Okay, we plugged in 3 for x. Then we get 9 times 1 third plus 1. 9 times 1 third is the same as 9 divided by 3, which is 3 plus 1, which equals 4. Okay, so when we plug in x equals 3, we get f of x equals 4. Okay, so that means we can go over 3, up 4, and there's a nice solid point there. And likewise, negative 3, up 4. And now we can connect our dots. And there is our quadratic that is starting to flatten out. Now remember, if we multiply this by 1 fourth, it would flatten out even more. 1 fifth, 1 sixth. Again, this is something you can try on Desmos. Try going into Desmos and plug in. 1 over 10 times x squared, and you'll see that it's getting even flatter as you go on, okay? So there we go. There are all of our graphs. Look how good they look. 
we're feeling good about them now. I hope, again, any questions you have, uh, we can bring them up tomorrow. But please do comment if you watch this video or send me an email so I know that you watched it um, so we can touch base tomorrow and make sure that you're doing well. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the second part of the quiz. Okay, not sure how to erase these pictures um, without making a whole new video. So I'm just going to scroll all the way over here to do this next part of the quiz. All right. So this next part is just asking us to write the new function to show the state of transformation. So we're taking f of x equals absolute value x over x. And we want to translate it two units to the left, two units left, and three units up. Okay. So two units to the left, that is going to be inputs because it's horizontal. Three units up, that's going to be affecting our outputs because it is vertical. Okay, so let's deal with the inputs first. Again, if you want to do horizontal, remember we always do the opposite, so we're not going to add two, we're going to subtract two. All right, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to add two. Now, what a lot of you wanted to do is just leave it like this, but go ahead and plug that into Desmos and see what it gives you. It does not give you something that looks like the parent function of absolute value x over x. When we are affecting the inputs, we're affecting the inputs, we have to affect all of the inputs, okay? So x is our input. x is our normal input. So if we are going to uh, shift our inputs, we're going to shift this horizontally, then we have to make sure that we are adding two to both of our inputs. The whole bread and butter of absolute value x over x is that the, um, the top is, one sec point, okay, so the top is as the same as the bottom, so it's essentially 1 over 1, except the top is always going to be positive while the bottom will be negative, right, that's what makes us get the graph that we want, okay, so we have to make sure that we always, when we're doing horizontal shifts, we always have to, um, we always have to do, add, add, whatever we do to the top, we have to add to the bottom with absolute value x over x, right, so, then we have to do our outputs now. So whatever our output is, we are going to um, add 3 to that. Okay. So whatever our output ends up being, we add 3, and that will shift our graph up. And that is our final answer. Okay. So now f of x equals absolute value x plus 2 over x plus 2 plus 3. Okay. Okay. Next one, we want to, and I, I apologize, I changed this from class because I wanted this problem to make a little bit more sense. All right. So we have f of x equals square root x, and we want to flip across y, flip across y, and then we also want to dilate by 3, dilate by a factor, factor of 3. Seriously don't know how the Khan Academy guy writes with such good handwriting on using software like this, like that guy's insane. All right, so first thing you want to do is we want to flip across the y axis, okay? So if we flip, flip across y, just remember that we are, uh, this is a horizontal transformation. We are flipping across y, which means we are flipping it horizontally. And if we're flipping it horizontally, what variable goes with horizontal again? Oh yeah, that's x, which is our input. So that means that instead of taking the square root of x, we're going to take the square root of negative x. Okay, but now we want to dilate it by a factor of 3, so we just throw a 3 out in front, and that is our final answer. Okay, our final answer is 3, 3 times the square root of x, square root of negative x, okay. I'm really trying to make this really good for you. Okay, this didn't really work, but it's okay. Three times the square root of negative x. Okay, that is our final answer. It has now been flipped horizontally because we multiplied our inputs by negative one, and then it's also been stretched vertically because we're multiplying our outputs by three. Okay, keeping the whole input-output thing is kind of hard to keep straight, but again, if we can get that down, that's what takes us to an honors level. Rather than just memorizing the rules, we actually understand why those rules are making sense, okay?
So just one last part to get done, and that is writing the function for each graph. Okay. All right, not the most high quality pictures that I've ever taken, but this should work just fine. Okay. So first, let's look at this uh, straight line one. So right away, this should spark in your head. This is absolute value x over x, okay? Because again, with absolute value x over x, whatever we plug in, we should be either getting one or negative one because it should be the same as on top as it is on bottom. It's just possible that the bottom might be negative, which would make it a negative one, okay? So what we should notice with absolute value x over x is when normally when we plug in a negative number, well, absolute value is always positive, so it's going to be positive on top, but it's going to be negative on bottom because, again, we're plugging in a negative number. So then the whole thing is going to be negative, which would give us a negative 1. But in this case, when we plug in a negative number, we get a positive number. So that means that this thing must have been reflected, okay? And it's, uh, it actually, with absolute value, x does not end up mattering whether it was reflected horizontally or vertically because it, you can try it like it'll be the same right it, if you reflect it vertically you'll still end up with the same graph as if you reflect it horizontally okay so uh so we ha definitely have to have a negative out in front when we have this function so we'll say f of x equals negative okay and then uh for sure absolute value x on top but we have to think are is this thing stretched at all so we look normally again we're at one and negative one but here we're at one half and negative one half all right, so it appears that this has been either it has been compressed, and we can see that we're up here at one half, and we're down here at negative one half. So we must be multiplying by a uh, by a one half. So all we do is we multiply by one half, and I would have liked to do that on the left, but that's okay. So that gives us with negative absolute value x over two x. Okay. There we go. We've multiplied our function by one half, and we have flipped it by multiplying by a negative, and that is our final answer. Our final answer. Okay. All right. So now we just have to deal with this hyperbola. Okay. So with hyperbola, I guess it's kind of hard to tell where the asymptotes are, but it should be pretty clear that this has not been shifted at all. It looks like um, zero zero is still the center of this, so it hasn't been shifted. So we just have to see has it been reflected or stretched or compressed, okay? So uh, we can remember pretty easily that typically 1 over x looks something like this. So it looks like this has definitely been shifted or uh, been reflected because, again, normally our dude would be up here and the other one would be down here. So it looks like it's been reflected. Um, it's been reflected. And I believe with hyperbolas, again, it might not matter if it's reflected horizontally or vertically. It should give us the same result. That's something we can try out. Um, so, because again, like if we reflect it horizontally, it'll give us the same thing as if we reflect it vertically. So, it shouldn't matter where we put our negative. All right, so let's just start to write this, f of x equals negative 1 over x, okay? That's what it was, but it looks like it's been stretched because again, with hyperbolas, normally we see our center and we would go over one, and since it's been reflected, we go down one, and we'd go over one, and we'd go up one, but it seems like we go over one, down one, two, three. We go over one, up one, two, three, okay? So, uh, instead of having a one on top, instead of having a one, let's erase that. We are multiplying this whole thing by three, which gives us negative three over x, okay? And another point we can check is we can, we should check what happens when we plug in three, because when we plug in three, we get negative three over three, which is just negative one. So let's make sure at three, we're at negative one. Oh yeah, we are, okay? And then let's make sure when we plug in negative three, we're at positive one. Okay, yeah, we are, and again, because we plug in negative three for x, we get negative three over negative three, which should be giving us positive one for an output. So there it is, there's our function, f of x equals negative three over x, all right? And that's it, okay, that's it, that's done. This whole quiz is done. Uh, again, if you watch the video, please comment or email, somehow let me know so we can check in tomorrow and make sure you're really feeling good about this. Um, 
But again, we'll just uh, take any lasting questions tomorrow before we move on from transformations. All right.